What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today we're going to be discussing the annoyances of macOS Sequoia that Apple definitely needs to address as soon as macOS Sequoia releases to everyone. Now while this wallpaper is really nice and I think iPhone mirroring is going to be a great and really popular feature, we got a lot of things that macOS Sequoia has introduced that is really annoying to a lot of people that a lot of people, including myself, might just stay on macOS Sonoma or older. So let's take a look at the first one, which is a very specific pop-up. All right, so I am authorizing access to OBS right here to be able to record my screen. I'm gonna quit and reopen the app. And then when I try to add a macOS screen capture, I can only allow it for one week or open system settings. And if OBS is trying to request to bypass the system private window picker, and directly access your screen and audio. All right, let's open system settings. Maybe it just open system settings and just allowed for one week, which is one of the most annoying things about Sequoia because what if I want to screen share with Zoom or screen share with an app inside of Google Chrome? I would effectively be forced to use Safari or hope that the user uses an Apple device so that you can use FaceTime if I do not want to get that annoying pop-up every week. And I saw that pop-up every single week when recording videos for you guys showing off what is new inside of macOS Sequoia, I just ended up using QuickTime Player again, despite a bug with QuickTime Player that made me run away from the app that still isn't fixed to this day. I'm gonna show you part of one of my older videos to show you what the issue is. This is not bad editing, this is just QuickTime Player doing this little bug. Yeah, I've opened on my phone. Really nice, we're able to. All right, the next one has to do with passion projects and people who do not wanna pay a $99 app store developer fee. So I downloaded an app from GitHub, right? And a lot of other free apps that are considered passion projects are heavily affected by this feature. So you may have seen this pop up before that says timer not opened. App cannot verify that timer is free of malware and that could possibly harm your Mac or compromise your privacy. Now if we press done right here, the way you would bypass that pop-up before is you would right click and press open and now it's just the same exact pop-up. We cannot access this app at all, you may think. Well, I trust this app, it's open source. If I take a look at the source code, I could just verify that it will not harm my Mac. This looks like an app that will not harm it at all. It just looks like a passion project that somebody just wanted to make and I cannot open it despite using the workaround. Now you gotta go straight into system settings, scroll down the privacy and security, scroll all the way down, and then press open anyway. Then you get another pop-up where the recommended option is move to trash, and then you could press open anyway. And then you have to actually enter your password because we are attempting to open an app that may cause harm to our Mac. Keep in mind, I could verify the code and a lot of other people could verify the code. Verify that it is completely safe. And I'm gonna enter my admin password because I know this app is safe. And now I can finally open the app. You have to do a lot more steps in order to be able to open up this really simple app that just calculates a timer. And gotta say, this is a pretty nice app. I like how you just scroll it. Hopefully these guys can get an App Store account and update their app so we'll be able to open it easily inside of Mac with Sequoia. All right, so the next annoyance about macOS Sequoia is app group containers. And the only way to resolve this one is to go inside of your iOS and open the terminal and type in a very specific command, csrule disable, in order to bypass this one. In fact, this is affecting development for Willy Widgets quite a bit for version 3.0. As you can see, we have this little pop-up right here. Willy Widgets like to access data from other apps. The reason it thinks I'm accessing data from other apps is because I'm trying to synchronize themes from the app to go into the widgets right here. Now I'm going to say right now these are the iOS widgets ported from my iPhone and not the actual Mac widgets. But I really want to transfer all these settings that the user configures to all these widgets right here. And the only easy way to do this was app group containers for the longest time. Now there were a couple ways to bypass it. The first one was prefixing it with the app's team ID. So this means that you would need, once again, a $99 a year subscription and you would prefix it with your user ID that you get with that subscription. Here's an example of what app group containers look like on iOS, right? And this is what Willy Widgets used for a couple of things. But what Apple wants us to do is to use your, your Apple team ID as a prefix. So this is our prefix before they all had to start on group on iOS. But on macOS, in order to bypass this, they have to use this. 
which requires you to purchase a $99 year subscription. Now the thing is with your macOS app, if you have an iOS target destination, you specifically cannot use this, you have to use this, which means it is a lot harder to access your app group container, which means the user will have this pop up every single time. And going back to widget extensions right here, which is what these are called, you may notice that on my Mac does not show up right here. If I were to go to the weather app, for example, it says on this Mac, but Willy Widgets is installed on my Mac right here and, and that does not show up. That is because the app extension is crashing because Mac OS decides to click don't allow. Now this does not only affect apps, this can affect plugins because a lot of plugins are compiled in Swift, specifically logic plugins, and they may store data inside of the group containers. You can see this is where all of the data is stored inside of Willy Widgets. Specifically, the widget holder holds all the themes and stuff like that, and widget settings hold all the settings that you would use to configure your widgets. Now, you can really only see two apps right here that are using what they are supposed to. So this is Canva's user ID. However, taking a look at this, this is Apple Home, Apple Mail, iCloud Drive, you can see Apple doesn't care about their own apps. They're using the iOS identification process. Now why is this? Literally half the apps on macOS are pretty much exactly the same as their iOS counterparts, just like Willy Widgets is. And not to mention, Mac Catalyst apps are affected by this, which are apps ported from iOS to macOS. It's a lot harder to test those apps to see if they work on Sequoia if you use the app group containers. Because once again, Catalyst functions exactly like iOS. How Catalyst works on macOS is that it's basically a subsystem on macOS that could run modified iOS apps. However, there are a couple of exceptions to this rule, specifically apps that are from TestFlight and ones that are on the Mac App Store. However, Apple specifically says as a known issue, the incorrect problem might happen if the app otherwise would not for local development or apps on the Mac App Store. Which basically means that apps on the Mac App Store, completely verified by Apple, will continue getting this pop-up and pretty much crashing an entire widget extension. Now while this is partially fixed inside of macOS 15.1, as you can see right here, users might be incorrectly prone for test flight apps. Even notarized apps are affected by this because they have no exceptions at all to this rule. So yeah, it's not looking really good for macOS Sequoia. It might be considered macOS Vista if I say so myself. So yeah, in summary, a, a lot of new pop-ups are coming to macOS to try to scare users off for no reason, specifically with screen sharing apps and I think a couple other apps I don't remember off the top of my head are affected by this that have weekly pop-ups. It's a lot harder to run these kinds of apps, you have to specifically dig through settings and scroll all the way down. macOS tries to scare you off from running unsigned apps that do not pay the $99 subscription. And app group containers got a whole lot worse. Now is there anything you can do about this? Yes, there is. If you're running a macOS 15 betas, please file as much feedback as possible. I already filed feedback about app group and app containers. However, don't do this inside of macOS Sonoma, just do it inside of macOS Sequoia. Click on macOS and choose the appropriate category, and then click on suggestion. If we, if we can get as many people to suggest as possible to revert some of these changes, we can fix all these issues with macOS that are resulting in people switching to Windows because of some minor inconveniences. Thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, download my apps in the description down below, and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye!